Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Working with a hand plane can be an extremely fun and enjoyable time, especially when you're getting these curls that are just translucent and beautiful and full width and just gorgeous. But then every now and then you're not gonna be working on poplar, you're gonna be working on things like white oak, especially white oak that has switching grains and knots and curl. How exactly do you set up a hand plane to do this right? So first off, I have to say I'm sorry for the horrible audio. I recorded about four hours of footage today showing how this all goes together and smoothing out the board and talking it through. Took it over my computer and then realized that there was a problem with my microphone. So now I'm using the microphone on the camera. Um, so some of this is just going to be voiceover. Uh, so <laughs> sorry if it's a little bit discombobulated, but all the information is going to be here. It's probably actually going to be a little bit better information because I'll have thought through it three or four times. So when working with really difficult wood, you have to do several things to a hand plane in order to make it work. And there are lots of really expensive planes like the Veritas Custom Plane that I absolutely love. And this makes setting up really quick and really easy and a lot of fun. But the price tag on this is through the roof. Um, so you could do it with a lot of other things. And most of the time I'm using a standard Bailey pattern plane. And I can get all this work done with this plane. I recently got a Tay Tools number no. 4, and this is a relatively cheap plane. Uh, now, it's not cheap in quality, but it is very cheap in price. It's, it's affordable in comparison to a lot of the new ones. Now, it's not like the dirt cheap Harbor Freight, but with this one, this I can set up to do this incredibly figured wood and detail it. So today we're actually going to be looking at setting up this plane from factory settings I just pulled out of the box to smoothing this incredibly horrible board. Now everything I talk about with this plane can be done with any of the other planes. You can set up any Bailey pattern plane to smooth incredibly difficult wood. You just have to step through it and actually take a look at everything that's needed to make this happen. Now any schmo can plane poplar. And this is poplar edge grain with the grain. And this plane isn't particularly sharp, but I'm still getting really nice curls on it. This is something that you, you can grab a plane and go to town on it, and if the wood's easy, it planes relatively easily too. But this is white oak, and white oak is not easy. And this particular one has all this crotch figure in here. We've got some curl, there's a lot of inclusions. This is just an absolute pain. The grain goes up and the grain goes down, and it is all over the place. And if you look at the rest of this, we're going to be actually doing this whole board. Most of this board, we're going to be planing against the grain. And some of this curl, it's going up and down. No matter which direction you're going to be going on this, you're going to be getting tear out. And so this is like the worst possible case scenario. Then we take this same plane over to white oak with this curl and twist. And, uh, oh, uh, 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 yeah, that's a pain. <laughs> and we're just getting tear out everywhere. It's catching, it's gripping. And over here in this section with the, with the crotch, it just slides over it. There's really nothing that this plane does very well on this because it's not set up to do this and it's not terribly sharp. So we've got a lot of figure to work through in this and we need to set this plane up in order to handle it. And here over on this crotch grain, you can see how it just, it just slides through it. The blade doesn't even catch. That's a sign that the blade just isn't sharp enough. So what do we need to do to actually set this thing up? And the reason being is number one, it's very dense. Number two, it has a lot of silica in it. It dulls the blades rather quickly. Uh, number three, it is a ring porous wood. Uh, so it is very fractious. When the blade goes over it, the rings want to separate. They want to split out. They want to give you tear out. And that makes it very, very difficult. There are a lot of other figured woods that are incredibly difficult. You have your, you know, your curly maples, but with maple, it's much more homogenous wood because it's diffuse porous. The rings don't naturally want to split out as much as they do on oak. And there are a lot of other woods that are more difficult, but in my book, this is pretty much the most difficult wood in the world to work because it's just crazy. But if you plane it well, it's gorgeous. So today we're going to be putting these planes to the test. What do we have to do to set up these planes in order to smooth this board perfectly? Let's take a look. So this is the Tay Tools number no. 4. It is a relatively affordable plane uh, in comparison to a lot of other planes out there. Um, new, this is, is, is very cheap and, and well, most people can afford it. Especially if you're looking for a new plane, this is about as, as affordable as it gets. But out of the box, it's not quite set up well to do the smoothing. You have to sharpen the iron. Um, that's one of the things about this. When you get it, you're going to have to sharpen the iron. It doesn't come ready to go out of the box. Um, very few actually do, and I usually try it. But we're going to take it over this oak and have a bit of fun with it. Now, if you're working with a plane, you need to do three specific things in order to get it set up to do smoothing. Number one, the iron has got to be incredibly sharp. 
You've got to get this thing within an inch of its life so that it will do the work you want it to do. Number two, we need to close this mouth up. It comes standard from the factory with a fairly large mouth on it. And it's right now about a sixteenth of an inch open and I want it to be much, much tighter than that. Um, preferably the perfect smoothing plane would have this twice the thickness of a smoothing plane shaving. So from this shaving, we want it to be about twice that thickness from the very front edge of the mouth to the front edge of the iron. E, this is gonna be tight. Number three, and probably most overlooked, is the chip breaker. This is what can allow you to do some really difficult wood, because the curl will come up and hit the iron and then break on the chip breaker here. But in this case, this one has a bit of a lip on it straight from the factory. So we're going to have to do some work on that, because this lip will cause the curl to come up the iron and then get caught underneath the chip breaker, and will cause a little bit of an issue on that. So we want to adjust that up a little bit as well. And we'll be talking about specifically the use of the chip breaker here in a little bit, but keep in mind the chip breaker setting and how close it is to the front of this mouth is incredibly important. Here you can see how the knife will stick underneath the chip breaker. That's a sign that it won't work. We want to make sure that it's nice and smooth so that the chip can then slide right over this chip breaker. Number one, we need to sharpen the iron. And I have a whole pile of videos on how to sharpen irons and chisels. But we're just going to be going through this medium uh, coarse, medium, fine, and then onto the strop. And that way we can get a nice clean edge on it. I'm going to do it all freehand, and I want to sharpen it at somewhere around a 30 degree angle. I just don't want it to go any more than 35 degrees. Um, usually with a, a steeper angle, it means that the, the blade is going to last a little bit longer because this is a bevel down plane. Now, if it's a bevel up plane, uh, then you're going to run into other issues because you don't have a chip breaker. Um, and in that case, you do want a very high angle on there. But for this one, around 30 degrees. And I'm just going to freehand it on here onto the course and then onto the other stones. Let's just speed this up a little bit so I can show you the whole thing on here. It's really less than a minute's worth of work to do all of this, clean up the back a little bit, then take it over to the strop and it's done. It's, it's a quick and easy process and don't spend too much time really overthinking this. And yes, it does shave hair. It's just one of those ubiquitous things you have to show with hand tools. So, hey, it does. <laughs> Next, we need to look at the chip breaker. So I've drawn out on this the idea of what this actually is looking like because it's kind of hard to show the whole size of it. So you can see how the nose of this actually has a, front, a flat point on it. You can see there's a bevel on the front and then it comes down to this flat edge. And this is where the chips will connect to it. Also, you'll see how the foot on the front is lower than the back edge of it. And that will lift it up so that you can actually get some pressure when you screw the, the screw down on and keeps the front edge tight so that chips can't get underneath it. We want to get rid of this little corner on here. So basically, we're going to sharpen this. And I'm just going to loop like that and sharpen off that little corner so that there's a bull nose on it. Also, you notice this is a fairly high, steep angle. That will help compress the curl and, uh, well, break the chip, turning it into a chip breaker. Here I have the iron drawn on the bottom. You can see how the iron will connect to it. It'll give a nice clean angle there so if the chips run into it, they'll slide up the top. And this is basically how the iron is shaped underneath it. So that's what we need to do. We need to take that little corner off the front of this and uh, grind it down. To do that, I'm going to treat it basically like an iron and put an edge on it. I'm just going to freehand an angle on there, something pretty steep, something around 45, 50 degrees or so. And I'm going to keep going until I get a burr on the under, underside. And that way I know that this new angle on the nose will meet up with the bottom and I'll have a nice clean transition from one to the other. I'm going to keep going back and forth on this across all three stones until I get that nice and clean. Now we can mate it up to the iron and I want to make sure I have a good clean fit on here. I want it to be fairly close and tight to the mouth, but I want to make sure that my, my knife can't catch on that mouth. It just slides right over it. So if I put it on there and try and pull it back, it just slides over. It doesn't catch underneath. That lets me know I have a good clean fit there. I can also look through this crack here and hold it up to the light and see if there's any light coming through between the two pieces of iron. But you have to be kind of careful when you look up through there to make sure that uh, you, you can see it. So usually I use the knife technique, but sometimes if you look through there and see any light coming through, you need to do a little bit more work. Now we're going to put the screw through on these and tap them together. I want to get that chip breaker right up tight to the edge. And I want it to be about uh, two shavings away from the tip. So a very, very fine amount in there. And you can do that by loosening it up a little bit and then tapping it forward with the screwdriver. And once you get it in place, lock it down and you're good to go. Now we've finished two of the three steps. We want to put this all back together and start working on the mouth. Be very careful when putting it in. Don't let the tip hit the edge 
we don't want to ruin all the work we just put into sharpening that. So put it in, lock down the lever cap, and then we can flip it over and look at the mouth. And this mouth is pretty big. We're going to have to do some work to, to close that up. So on a Bailey pattern plane, you actually have to move the whole frog forward rather than adjusting the mouth. To do that, we're going to take the lever cap off again, and then we're going to disassemble the whole thing. Pull the iron out, and inside here you're going to see two screws that are holding the frog down. We want to loosen those two screws up. It doesn't take much, just twist them a little bit, and now we can drive this forward. Now in the back there is a screw down underneath the depth adjuster, and that will actually allow the whole frog to move forward and backwards as you turn it. So you actually want to drive it forward a little bit, and if it's too tight then you've got to loosen up the two screws in the top frog a little bit more. After we've moved it forward a little bit, we can reassemble it and then check the iron and make sure we're good. Pop it all down in there, tighten down the lever cap, flip it over and look at the mouth again. And in this case, ooh, now it's too tight. Okay, we've got to back it up a little bit. So it's take it all apart and loosen the frog and then adjust it, back it up a little bit more, check it, tighten it back down, put it back in, and you're going to go back and forth in this process quite a few times. In this one, it took me about six times. With the Bailey pattern plane, it's not a really easy thing to do, um, but once you get the hang of it and going back and forth, it gets done eventually. After going back and forth several times, you can see here now the mouth is really nice and tight. It's just a tiny bit open here, just enough space for a couple shavings to get through. That's what we're looking for. We want that nice, clean, tight mouth all the way across. Happiness. So now after all that, we have an incredibly sharp iron. Our chip breaker is close. We have a tight mouth. Now we can come over here. And oh, wow. That just slides through. You see, how I'm not taking much off. I'm just taking a little bit, and so it's only hitting the high spots. But even here, as it comes into the crotch, it goes really well. So here you can see this grain. I've been going at it just a little bit here now. Nice and smooth here, nice and smooth here. I've got a lot of tear out here to remove. Got some tear out over here at the last plane left. And so we can actually just come through here and slowly remove it down. I'm taking a very, very light shaving. And these are just like half a thousandth thick. Not taking off much. It's basically just hitting the high spots. Slowly getting rid of all that tear out left from the last plane. Now when smoothing and doing all the detail, you want to make sure that you're going straight in line with the board. You want your plane to be parallel with the board. We don't want to skew it like this because that will actually lower the angle of attack and make the mouth bigger, make the distance from the chip breaker bigger, higher chance of tear out. It, skewing the plane is a great way to make a planing easier, especially if you're taking off large amounts. Um, it goes a lot easier and goes pretty quickly. But uh, for smoothing, you don't want to skew the plane. You want it to be nice and straight all the way along the board. And that's what you're getting these beautiful curls from. Just incredibly happy. And I love how smooth this is coming out. This is one of these pleasing moments where I have to be very careful that I don't plane the board into non-existence because it's just so gorgeous. So here you can see the wood and how smooth it is. I'm very, very pleased with how this came out. There's a little bit of tear out still down here. I have to go about an eighth inch more in order to get down to that because the last plane just chewed it up. But all the rest of this is absolutely gorgeous, especially with the, the curl and the swirl and the switching grains. And most of it, I'm actually playing against the grain. Uh, you can see how when you take your time and set it up well, even with a relatively affordable plane, you can do a nice job. So whether you're going to be doing this with a low-end, good quality new plane, or you want to go up to the high-end professional plane, or you're using an antique, it's all going to be the exact same thing in how to set it up. They're all going to do the exact same work once you do the time to tune them up. You just have to tighten the mouth, sharpen the iron, move the chip breaker up nice and close, get all the fittings in them. The more time you spend actually fitting the plane, the better it's going to do, and it will clean up incredibly um, beautiful pieces of wood that have a lot of figure in them and do a really nice job. So don't always blame the, blame the plane. Sometimes you need to spend more time doing the setup and making sure that everything is the way you want it to be. 
Now, this method of work isn't just for a smoothing plane. You can put it into use for any of these planes. If they have a chip breaker, move it really close. If they can adjust the mouth, close that up. Sharpen that blade within an inch of its life. The higher the angle on the bed, the better you're going to get on this. So take your time, do it upright, make sure all your settings are as fine, as tight as they can be, and keep it sharp, and you'll be amazed at the grain you can go through. Whether you're smoothing is the final thing you're doing, or you're flattening and jointing and want to do it with your bigger planes, you can do that. Now, usually the way I do it is I'm going to have my scrub plane that takes off most of the material, and then I'm gonna bring in my jointer, which will then flatten the board and make it nice and true. And then I'm going to bring in my, my smoothing plane and smooth it all out and detail it. And that way I can keep the smoothing plane set up really nice and tight, and it's the only thing I use it for. And I can have my other planes set up that are a bit bigger mouth. They'll take off more quicker. Yes, they'll make more tear up, but oh well, I can come back and clean it up with this. And there are a few things as pleasing as really difficult curls. Just seeing the grain coming out in these is absolutely gorgeous. Um, just really, really happy curls. Now, if you want to see other videos I have on setting up a smoothing plane where I talk through this from a slightly different standpoint, if things weren't quite making sense on this one, go check out one of those. I'll leave those down below. Also, I have a link to the Rex Kruger's video where he did uh, talking about the difference between a Bailey pattern plane and a bedrock plane and, uh, and what the functions are between those. In the end, most relatively cheap, affordable planes will do the work for you. Some of them are just too cheap. You can't adjust the mouth closed. It doesn't have a chip breaker. Uh, the settings on this slowly go out, and some of them just aren't as useful for this. In which case, you can turn these into scrub planes and have a little bit of fun with that. If you want to see a list of tools and planes that I suggest, uh, particularly ones that I find to be affordable, but still are very good quality and will treat you well, I have an entire page set up for tool suggestions. There's a link to that down below. I hope this helped you out and answered a few questions. If you do have a few left over, let me know those down in the comments down below, or feel free to send me a message. I have a contact me form on my website. But I think that will about do it for today. A hand plane is a really fun thing, especially once you figure out how to get it set up and fine tune the whole thing down. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. The reason this video is here today is one of the patrons was asking me about setting up a plane to go against figured wood, and what can I do um, to get a really gnarly piece of wood good and smooth. Well, there you go, I hope you like this. If you'd like to join Patreon, I do pull a lot of my how-to videos from questions from people on Patreon, so thank you for that. And as well, this channel would not exist if it wasn't for the patrons on Patreon, so thank you for that. And if you meet anyone who's scrolling over here on the side, tell them thank you. So I think that's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Mmm, so smooth. A baby's bottom has got nothing on this board. Mm -hmm.